Big applause. Our next two speakers, so TJ Nagihan from Horizon Ventures, and Michael Stoppelman, former SVP at Yelp and currently advisor at Yelp. Big applause, guys. Let's rock it. Thank you, uh, and thank you South Summit for, uh, for hosting us. So I'm TJ, I'm a managing partner at Horizon Ventures. Uh, we're focused on investing in uh, data-driven companies and uh, I'm uh, very fortunate to be joined by one of my uh, good friends, Michael Stoppelman. Uh, I'll give a brief introduction of, of him, but he, he can probably give a better background. So uh, Michael has been uh, in the technology business uh, and studying technology since uh, an undergrad at, at Purdue where he studied CS. Uh, started out um, in the engineering department at, at Google um, and then very early on uh, joined uh, Yelp uh, and ended up leading its, its engineering efforts to several hundred engineers at the organization and also building out a, a pretty substantial data science team. So uh, thank, thank you, uh, Michael, for, for joining us. I'm very excited to be here at South Summit. So every conference that I go to, I get confused with my brother who happens to be the CEO at Yelp. I am not the CEO <laughs> at Yelp. I am uh, Michael Stoppelman. So uh, I'm sure that someone will inevitably tweet at Jeremy, but yeah. it's not me. <laughs> but nice, uh, yeah. nice brotherly uh, relationship uh, <laughs> building out the business and the engineering side exactly. of, of, exactly. uh, of Yelp. So. Uh, so the, the topic for, for today is, is AI, and um, Michael, since you, know, you were, were early at, at Google, I think you've you know, been at least aware of this for, for a long time, but um, you know, maybe uh, just wanted to, to get started with um, you know, how has AI evolved over the last you know, 10 plus years, um, and why is everybody talking about AI now? Yeah, so, you know, my, my history, you know, when I got started into data science and all of this big data, I was actually at Google when Rob Pike actually released, um, released Sawzall, which was, a, which was a, a tool that allowed engineers to write map reductions really fast over large amounts of data. And so I was one of the first users of this language, so I was literally one of the first humans to be able to use these gigantic distributed systems that were abstracted away. And, when I was first running those programs, I didn't even know how many hundreds of machines I was using. And one day, someone showed me how many machines, and I was like, oh, wow, like, I really <laughs> have a lot of power here. And so uh, through, through my experience at Google and seeing, seeing how they built their moat of, of all these technologies, um, that, that kind of helped me in, in terms of when I looked at Yelp, how, how, I was gonna, how, how we were going to build the next generation of systems for, for building the best local search engine in the world. Sure. And so that's, that's kind of like, that was kind of my, you know, that was kind of my launching pad. And so, you know, all of the, you know, at, at Yelp, all of the core, when you think of Yelp, you, you might think, oh, it's just a, a local search engine. It's got all these different elements to it. It has ads and search. And, and when you come to a business page, there are all these photos and, and there are all sorts of different you know all these different parts of it that need to need to actually be um, need to be driven by machine learning driven systems, sure. and so that so the the Google experience really showed me the power of log data, big data, and the power of these algorithms on top of that. Gotcha. And so I mean, it sounds like you at least from from having your experience at Google at least had sort of a, a mindset about data in mind from from early on. Right. Um, you know, when you originally were building out the, the sort of core infrastructure at Yelp, uh, was, that, was that always in mind and did you get it right from the beginning or did you, have to, did you really have to, to kind of rethink things every, th every few years? Yeah, I think, I think given the audience here of a lot of startups and a lot of folks involved in early stage companies, you know that the, you know, when, when things hit product market fit, the most important thing to do is to like keep that product market fit don't, don't screw it up and actually execute and make sure you survive. 
And a lot of the first steps of building an organization, like in the early days, are about reducing single points of failure in your organization. So you don't just have one DBA or one security person, because if any of those go, people go out, if they're sick or they go on paternity or maternity leave, your team is left with no resources on those. So a lot of the energy spent in those early days is really just build, building the systems that, that have to be there. There's not really time for these optimization knobs and building new, adding new levers. And really, machine learning adds these new levers to businesses. And I, I, think that, I think that a lot of people don't see it that way, but it's really like you get to, you get to add like the, you, you remember when you play like FIFA soccer or FIFA football um, because we're <laughs> in Spain. Um, but you, when you hit that turbo button and the player moves faster, that's really what you're doing with machine learning and AI in your business is you're giving yourself that turbo boost. You're adding 20, 30% in revenue to, to your top line. And it's really, it, it's, it, really, it really can accelerate the business in a lot of different ways. What are, so that's really interesting that you, you said. So it sounds like, uh, at least at, at, at Yelp, a lot of it was just like making sure systems stayed up and, and, and alive in the beginning years. But as you got to scale, as you collected more data, as things became more stable, uh, you were really able to optimize and, and sort of hit that turbo boost button using machine learning and other AI right. techniques. Maybe, can you give some examples of, of you know, some of the things that were m more impactful, uh, Yelp? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the obvious things are like lever, you know, when you're, when you're building an ad, an ad targeting system, uh, one of the core problems in, in building that ad targeting system is, is predicting what click-through rate you're gonna actually get from those ads. That's the core kind of business problem that you, or engineering problem that you need to solve. So given, given a user that comes to Yelp, they see an ad, what is, the, what is the probability that that user is going to click on that ad? And if you, can get that, if you can get that super accurate, then you don't have to show the ad to users that, that aren't going to click it. And then you can only show it to users that are going to click it, making your site way more relevant, way more, way more sticky, giving you a way better, way better user experience, and ultimately get driving more revenue towards the right, towards the right businesses that need to be shown at the right time. So, so that, that is like one really, that, that lever exi exists in a lot of different businesses. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's shared among Yelp and, and, and Google in that case. Um, that's like, that's one of the, the kind of, one of these core really, really important problems to solve. And so machine learning is a, is a, is a it's like the, the most important aspect of that problem is learning that function, learning that optimization problem. Um, and that was a that was a really key problem to to to, to learn. And, and the first systems that you build are really really crappy. They're very ad hoc. They're you know you hard code constants. You're like well 0.15 sort of works. It gives it gives a reasonable amount of quality on these ads. And then once you build a team around optimizing your ad, but you know your ad your ad system, you start you start trying to understand and learn from all the data that you're collecting and start changing those, changing those variables and figuring out, oh, like when we, when we show these plumber ads on these, on these certain, you know, when people are looking for home construction and we show these plumber ads, like people click on them a lot more. And, we, and, and then this function, this, this, this massive statistical engine is figuring out all those different relationships. Okay, when, when people are remodeling their homes, they're also sometimes looking for plumbers. And so you learn these types of relationships over time, and it really, really puts an accelerant on your business. And you, and you can improve click-through rates over time. And the, the thing that comes back to my head is like, Intel never knew how it was gonna get the next innovation for the next doubling of the, uh, of the number of transistors in a chip, right? They just believed that through innovation, they would double every 18 months. This is Moore's law, right? So the number of transistors doubles every 18 months. And that is, that's kind of the same leap of faith that you have to take in these mach machine learning and, and, uh, and, and AI problems, is that there's no, one, there's no one at Google, there's no one at Yelp, there's no one at Facebook that knows where the next innovation's going to come from. You have to take that, you have to take that step as a, as a business leader, as an engineering leader, that your team will find that next step. And that's, that's really what I saw over the course of Yelp, is like, Hey, those first systems were really awful. Like the first, the first click-through rates that we saw in ads were were not that great. But methodically, through lots and lots of heavy lifting of lots of engineers that 
that worked really, really hard on, on, on the team um, came up with these innovations along the way, and it really, really changed the, changed the face of the ad system over time. Yeah. And so it's one of those things that's kind of like beyond the balance sheet. It's like something that you can't, you know, like the, you know, investors, it, it, it's, it's harder to see that you have those types of levers. And I think it's one of the, one of the hidden secrets of a lot of, these, a lot of these different types of businesses is that there are these powerful levers of innovation. How do you, how do you know if, if machine learning and, and artificial intelligence is gonna be applicable to your business and have a meaningful impact? Um, and, and, and maybe as a second question to that, when should companies start to, to actually think about that and evaluate it? Like when is a company ready to start implementing yeah. uh, the, those types of systems? Yeah, I hear, I hear all the time about business problems where you'll hear about, you'll hear, oh, there are two people that optimize the system by hand every day, and um, you know, we, have a, we have a touring company, and there are two people that sit in the main office, and uh, we run tours in Spain, and we need to, we need to shuttle tourists from the airport to, to these different islands, and so we need this number of buses, and they figure out the number of buses, and how to get there, and they do it, they basically solve the traveling salesman problem by hand, every day, and, and so you hear about these problems in every different type of business. I hear about, I, I, just, I just met with a hotel, someone that buys hotels, and, and I was like, hey, you know, Brett, do you, do you actually, like, do your managers actually change the prices on all these different hotel websites for the different prices of rooms every day? He's like, yeah, they log in like four times a day and change the prices every day. It's like businesses, like the, all these types of business problems where you have people manually changing based off of data that, that's accessible. You know, like the, the types of things that Brett wants his managers to think about are like, is there weather, like what's the weather pattern gonna be? Is it gonna be a nice day in Palm Springs? Is it not gonna be a nice day in Palm Springs? Is it going to be, uh, you know, is there gonna be a South Summit type event happening near your hotel? Well, maybe prices should go up as demand's gonna go up. And so like all of these types of things can be, can be integrated into an algorithm and you really need to understand what, what, what types of problems the algorithms can solve, but those two classes of problems I just talked about probably are applicable in so many different types of businesses. You probably are going like, oh, yeah, we do have a team of like four people working on these manual problems when they actually could be solved more efficiently and faster uh, and enable your business to do more once you have those systems on a near real-time basis. And I always see businesses transform once you can do things way faster. So once you have the predictions happening so much faster, you can recalculate based off real-time data that's happening in your business and actually update intraday. So if you're making deliveries, you could actually update based off traffic patterns and then update update all your vehicles to have the latest information right then rather than having a predefined delivery schedule when the truck leaves the lot. Yeah. So there's lots and lots of different ways that I see this transforming businesses. And, it, and again, it's back to that analogy of the turbo button in FIFA. Like you want your player to move faster and you want your business to move faster. And so that's the best analogy I can come up, you know, for, yeah. for being in Spain. I think that, <laughs> I think that works. Excellent. Um, well, you know, we, we had a, a discussion earlier about, you know, some of the, the different um, sort of types of machine learning techniques. And I was wondering if, if maybe you could kind of go over some of those. I, I think, you know, when we talked earlier, you were talking through uh, deep learning, which is kind of one of the more, uh, one of the later techniques to come out. I'm curious, what, what is deep learning? Um, is that something that you guys used at Yelp? And maybe you could give an example of a, of a problem that you solved using yeah. that. Uh, maybe there's some other techniques as yeah. well that are worth going over. Yeah, so so I'll I'll zoom out a little bit, and so there's a little history here. The re, you know, back this is a question that TJ asked, and I didn't really answer it that well at the beginning. <laughs> um, which is why you know why are we talking about AI now? If if a lot of this stuff is you know if you're an engineer, you've you've probably taken an AI sort of class when you're when you're going through college. Like one of the biggest things that's changed. Um, in the last five years, around 2011, is this class of algorithms called deep learning algorithms, um, neural nets, um, that were actually discovered in like the 70s and 80s. Um, we started to be able to train them with lots of, like way more orders of magnitude, more data that was 
just computationally not available before. And so we hit this computational curve where we can now train these models. And when we threw all of the images on YouTube of cats at the neural net, it actually figured out what a cat was. And once we made that discovery, and there are a bunch of other disco key discoveries, I'm not an academic, so I don't know exactly what the papers were, or what the, who the exact engineers were that made these discoveries, but there is now, basically we have this curve of, of deep learning where deep learning was subpar compared to these, to these other algorithms that were performing at, 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 at this level. And then around 2011, 2012, deep learning actually overtook a lot of those algorithms. So we're talking about SVMs and logistic regression and different, different, different uh, classes of algorithms that you used to use. And so you might be like, oh, that's cool. Like, how does that affect things? Well, I'll give you an example. So if you were starting self-driving cars in 2007 and you wanted to figure out how a, whether a stoplight was a green or, or a red, you would have probably spent six months training an SVM classifier on tons and tons of data and trying to perfect it and make sure that it could tell whether the, the red light was actually red or the, it was a yellow or if it was a green. Well, that's now an internship project that you use a deep learning and classifier for and you can get it done in about three days. So it's just like completely blown the, the, the way that you look at these types of problems. So actually starting a self-driving car project today is exponentially easier than it was starting it in 2007, 2008, 2009, probably till 2011. So it just changes the game. It changes the amount of effort you now need to put in when before you were using classifiers that now, you know, if you were in research looking at SVM, SVM error rates and things, it's, it's almost like you're, you're kind of like history now because the deep learning algorithms are so sufficiently powerful. Um, and so when, when, at Yelp, once we saw, you know, like once, once we saw the effects of like, okay, there's this deep learning stuff, it's really, it, it was on that cusp. It was like a slightly better than, than the state of the art of all these other algorithms for computer vision. And, and one, of the, one, of the, one of the early, we were one of the early um, people to actually um, implement an AR functionality in the Yelp app. So if you go into the Yelp app, you'll find this monocle feature where we actually project uh, the businesses on your, on your phone. You can, actually, you can actually see where the bubbles of the business are. And so when you're looking around, you can look through your phone and it shows where the businesses are. Um, that, that, that was, you know, all of, all of, that, type of, all of that type of stuff, it, all of this is changing right now. Mm -hmm. And so, so with, the, with, the de with all of these deep learning algorithms, you can, we, we were wondering what could you actually implement with these deep learning algorithms. So uh, one idea we had was take that AR idea and then apply it where you could actually look at, look at a, a, a sign of a business and actually st show the star rating next to that. So we actually did a project to, you know, we piloted trying to do that. And we were using the state of the art. Um, there was a Microsoft paper about, about how to implement that and we spent two years trying to implement it, a PhD in computer, you know, in computer vision tried to, tried to implement that, and we never got results that were sufficiently awesome. And this was before deep, deep learning had gotten the buzz that it did. And now you flip forward to today, and that project mu probably is a lot easier, but now we've implemented it on a bunch of different, on a bunch of different um, projects. And one of which is, if you go to a business page on Yelp for a restaurant, and there are a large number of photos, and you swipe through three or four photos on your mobile device, we'll show a set of categorizations. We'll, we'll ask you, do you want to see photos of the food? Do you want to see the, the inside of the restaurant, the outside of the restaurant? Do you, want to see, uh, do you want to see drinks photos? Like, what do you want to see about this restaurant? Those are all deep learning learned labels. So no human labeled any of those photos. From the actual pixels of those photos, we figured out what, what label should occur on that photo which is just mind boggling. That wasn't possible when I graduated school and it wasn't possible until about 2011, 2012 to do any of this stuff. And so really this is like a revolution in, in machine learning. It's, it's really a step function up. It's like basically everything just, you know, it's like having a car that could go like 80 miles an hour and now it can go 120. Yep. Um, and so, 
That's why everyone's so excited about AI and you're hearing about it everywhere. And maybe you're an investor and you're like, I'm so sick of AI. Well, it's a step function up. If you want to ignore the 120 mile per hour Ferrari, go for it. But it's not a good idea because this thing is transforming every business out there. It's, yeah. a, it's going to transform hotels. It's going to transform oil and gas. It's going to it's going to transform every single vertical one by one. And and if you're if you're not paying attention and you're holding on to businesses that might have been built 30 or 40 years ago and don't have someone thinking about how to apply these machine learning these machine learning ideas to those problems. If you have a large sales team and you're not thinking, how do I get the best leads to the best salespeople using machine learning? You are at a disadvantage compared to your competitors that, that are looking at that as a potential opportunity. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, that, that brought up my next question of, well, we you know, heard you talk through how uh, machine learning and AI is starting started to uh, you know, enter into our lives. And first it was through ad optimization uh, where it had pretty significant revenue impact for some, you know, a concentrated set of large tech businesses right. like Google, Facebook, Yelp. Um, but it sounds like, at least in those tech businesses, it's starting to affect more. You used the image recognition example of how that actually improves uh, sort of the app and the functionality. But wondering, you know, sort of how, how far will it go? And, and uh, you know, we, we talked through self-driving cars and how basically that wouldn't be possible unless you had machine learning and AI. Uh, which is in the transportation space, but is this is this going to affect all industries? And what what do you think is the time horizon that that happens? Yeah, so you know the one of the things that I always come to is like I I fire up Siri, and uh, I go Siri, please call T J Nahigian, and Siri goes calling T J roommate, and I go that's not the T J I wanted to call, <laughs> <laughs> and and so. We're still, we still have lots to accomplish on machine learning, especially in voice, um, espe you know, especially in a lot of these vision cases. I mean, the false positive, the false positive rate, all, all of the type one, type two errors, like there are still lots of mistakes that these algorithms make, but they're improving at such a fast rate. And I go back to that analogy of the 18 month transistor cycle, Moore's law. We're seeing a similar kind of situation in machine learning and especially in the deep learning space. Every day, graduate students, tinkerers, people, people that are at these large companies uh, like Google, Facebook, that are doing underlying research into these, into these types of fields are discovering new fundamental things about these algorithms that change that curve from 120 miles an hour for that Ferrari to 140. And then to how are we gonna get to 150 miles an hour? So it's speeding up. Like we're making really, really large improvements to a lot of these algorithms and it's changing, it's changing the way that engineers are looking at what problems can be solved. And so I think that a lot of, a lot of what we're, a lot of, a lot of the innovations that are going to be coming out, like I think that, I think that self-driving cars are going to be here in the next, in the next couple of years. Um, but I don't think that it's going to be in the, in the vision that I think a lot of people have. I think it's going to be on constrained situations, maybe, it's going to run the highway exit to exit, or, or it's going to run a bus line around, around an airport in a very controlled, highly censored, highly protected area before you see it doing full, full, full around the city through tons of hazards, through tons of edge cases. I think, I think we'll probably see the closed circuit in the next 24 months or maybe sooner, um, and then we'll start seeing the, like, general, the yeah. general vehicle stuff over the next probably three, four years. Got it. And you know, we only have about a minute and a half left. Um, so I uh, want to ask a question that uh, I think uh, some of you may have heard of. So there's now a couple of different sort of views on AI. Uh, one of the more vocal um, participants in this conversation has been Elon Musk talking about uh, regulation for AI, uh, fearing that you know the robots are going to take us over and we're going to be in a Skynet type uh, simulation type situation soon. How, how do you feel about that? Do you think there should be regulation in terms of uh, AI and machine learning, or is that something that should just be explored freely? I think right now it's a bit premature. Um, I think that from the examples that that you can find endlessly around your house, you know, there was a funny example where um, someone someone through the TV said. 
hi Alexa, and then it caused this chain reaction of like Alexa's everywhere in everyone's <laughs> home, like blowing up and, and asking, you know. I, I, you know it, South Park episode. Yeah, South Park <laughs> episode. Um, but, but we still have a long ways to go with, it, with AI, and I think it's a little bit premature to, to be sounding the alarm of like, hey, this is, this is, this is going to be something that's going to, to harm the world right now. I think that there are more imminent threats, but I think it's, it's, good, it's good to start forming a foundation of how we should think about it. Um, I think I think a lot of a, a lot of sci-fi books have tried to ch try to talk about where this is going to go, and I think it's good to, good to look at some of that literature as like a, a heads up of where the potential bad ways could go. Um, but it, it's good to be hesitant, but I don't think that we should uh, we should cut off uh, areas of research at this point. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, well, I think that uh, wraps up our our session and. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Michael, for giving us your insights and perspective on AI and machine learning. And thank you, South Summit, for, uh, for joining the conversation. Yeah, Hopefully this was useful. Thank you.